these long-term uh, calorie restriction studies, we already know that they're gonna result in people regaining the weight back. They're too excessive. The body eventually slows down metabolism. We know this from multiple calorie restriction studies. And so now you're stuck. So now you lose weight, but now your, your metabolism adjusts even lower. So that means that you're pretty much condemned to regaining all the weight. Let's start thinking about repairing systems, you know, based on all the things that we discussed and not just putting a Band-Aid on it. You have diabetes, drug number one, then you escalate to drug number two, then you get cardiovascular disease, you have two more drugs there. And this is what happens. The average 45 year old now has got two chronic conditions in the United States. By the time you get to 55, 60, uh, you probably have about three chronic conditions. As humans evolved, we evolved probably insulin resistance as a way to survive the winters. And then the winter comes or some period where there is no food and the system also goes into a maintenance mode. So now I'm just going to protect myself as much as possible, age as slowly as possible, uh, waiting for the next uh, wave of lots of food. And then you become insulin sensitive again. Mm. So um, I think what happens now is everybody is insulin resistant mm -hmm. all the time or, or somewhat insulin resistant all the time because the winter never comes. We, we always think about smoking and, and obesity as major risk factor for diseases, but when you compare them to aging, they disappear as mm -hmm. risk factors, right? So, so targeting aging is the most important thing, even more than obesity, way more than obesity. Mm. If you look at the genes that regulate aging in many organisms. Um, the growth pathways seem to be at the center of the aging process. So they're protected from cancer, they're protected from cognitive decline, they're protected from diabetes. Uh, so they seem to be protected from most of the human um, chronic uh, age-related disorders. Mm -hmm. So we gotta go with things that are more realistic, less invasive, and that's where the fasting making diet comes in. And this is, again, 30 years of work. It's not an idea that you know, I say, oh, I see a few a patients trend. in my clinic, they're doing so well with these five days, I'm just gonna do that. As it happened for many very popular uh, diets in, in, in the past. And that's where this prolonged, say, five days, that's what we've been working on, it seems to be pretty clear that they switch you into an insulin-sensitive mode. And also, in a, they switch you into a long-term anti-aging mode. So, for example, leptin stays low for a long time after you, you return to normal diet. IGF-1, the central growth factor pro-aging, it stays down for months. So we, in the first trial, we showed that after three months from the end, IGF-1 was still lower. The fasting mimicking diet, uh, it's really about nutri technology and uh, we don't push you to 1500 calories. We push you to keep the calories maybe just a little bit lower and then we work on the nutri tech, what I call nutri technology. We work on making it easier for you to lose weight rather than starving you for a year, hoping that you, you, keep, you, you stay like that for the rest of your life. And in the fasting making diet, we put the carbohydrates on purpose. We believe that be protective of the, of the muscle mass. So it's, it's a lot less than, than you will have um, in a normal diet. So now we have three clinical trials showing no muscle loss and increasing relative lean body mass. You know, don't worry so much about your glucose monitor and whether there is a spike. Worry about the consequences on abdominal circumference, body fat, insulin resistance, right? Mm -hmm. So it, this was 30 years of building, building, building from all these pillars, right? And then you get to a point, you say, what if we make people do this three times a year for five days? That seems to be very realistic. It's clearly showing this long-term efficacy and everybody can test it, everybody can grab it. So now we have 30 clinical trials running. That's slowly moving in the toolkit of physicians, um, but it's also moving in the toolkit of the people that want something that is, is being clinically tested. We did a clinical trial with Walter Longo in which individuals were enrolled in this five-day fasting mimicking diet, and they went through three cycles of this, and we tested their biological age at the beginning of the intervention and the end of the intervention. And what we found was that this had a reduction of about two and a half years on average for participants, even though this only took place over about five months. Three five-day fasts were enough to reduce biological age by two and a half years. 
the proliferation of stem cells, the regeneration of the immune system, the elimination of senescent cells. The effects of fasting seem as effective as all the most sophisticated anti-aging methods. It's just three times doing this five-day fast, and we think that if people were to maintain this, doing this a few times a year, every year of their life, this would have a huge impact on their rate of biological aging over time. I don't know, maybe 30 or 40,000 doctors around the world that are mm. now just, uh, recommending fasting mimicking diets. Mm. So here we know that nutrition can revolutionize, you know, almost everything in medicine. It can certainly make an incredible difference, more than we've ever seen. I think that's the idea of the FMD. Maybe for those that are now willing to make daily changes, um, that's where you, you bring in the food as medicine. I can tell you that that even if you're diabetic, you're obese, you got, you've been taking medicine for years and years and years, mm -hmm. no problem, we mm -hmm. can bring it back. We cannot bring it back in everybody, but I would say the great majority of people and really convert them into something that they can sustain for the rest of their lives.